because during this madness of COVID-19 and everything that goes with it all over the world, I believe that it's tough for everybody and um, business-wise, leisure-wise and people feel locked in. Now, here in Africa, it has hit us very hard, especially the wildlife industry and the tourism industry for that matter. We all know about the dangers we face in Africa with the poaching, especially for rhino. And I want to give you some background on what's happening on the ground. It costs a lot of money to protect a wildlife area, be it a private game reserve or game farm in South Africa or Namibia, or even the open concessions that you find in places like Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Tanzania. It costs a lot of money to run it, to maintain it, and to manage it. Where does that money come from? Very, very little of that money comes from government. Very little comes from NGOs. The bulk of it comes from you, the hunter. And it's an age-old story. Everybody talks about it. And the greenies, as we call them from the other side, they keep on asking for proof that the hunting areas does anything for conservation. Well, they don't want to listen to facts. To them it's all about emotions. But I don't want to talk about them. I want to talk to you, the client. We've been hit hard, as I said, with this COVID-19 issues. Most of the concession areas closed. There's no income for them, which means there's no salaries that can be paid to the game scouts, to the people on the ground who look after the place, who protects it, who manages the wildlife. We're all living off of scraps now to try and keep an area safe. It is a free for all to any poacher. Now, because of the amount of job loss that happened because of COVID-19, people still have to eat. And this opens the door for people to start poaching. And you get different kinds of poaching. The subsistence poacher is somebody who sets a snare or uses a dog and he catches a small animal to feed himself and his family because they're starving. There's no income from the concessions or from the hunting areas and he still has to eat. Now, the commercial poacher is a big concern. They're the ones who are destroying our rhino population, the elephants, lions, they use poison, they use assault rifles or silenced hunting rifles and they steal them. They can't just go in and buy ammunition or a weapon. They, they steal the stuff. So it's criminals. And then they supply the demand in the Far East like Vietnam, China, Japan and even some in the Philippines. Now these commercial poachers have got an open door at the moment because there's no one to protect the wildlife areas. Who protects it? Your dollars. Your dollars finance the protection of the area, not only the animals. There's a lot more to a wildlife area than just the animals. There's soil management, plant manager, management, and then the wildlife management. 
also if there's any disease breakout of whatsoever nature it's the management teams who pick it up and who act upon it to prevent the spread of any major disease like for instance foot and mouth corridor disease rinderpest those things decimated Africa's wildlife in the past. Now with sound management, if it's picked up early enough, you can act upon it. The first line of defense are the hunters. The areas where we operate are not visited by a normal ecotourist. I'm yet to see an ecotourist in the Great Rift Valley in the mountains of Ethiopia where we hunt mountain yala, I've yet to see an ecotourist in the tropical rainforest in Central Africa where we hunt bongo, forest siratunga, dwarf buffalo. I've yet to see an ecotourist in the deep sand and the desert area of the Kalahari. Yes, they go to the game parks in those areas. But uh, they like to live in nice lodges. They want comfort. Rightfully so. They pay some money for it. But in the true remote areas, take the Zambezi Delta in Mozambique, I've yet to see a single ecotourism operation going on there. There's no ecotourists. So yes, we do look after those areas. The hunter's dollars pay for it. That hunter's dollars don't just pay for you to come and enjoy a hunt and to take back a memento. It's there to help the area. During the floods in Mozambique a few years ago, it's the hunter's dollars who saved thousands of people. The animals didn't need saving. They knew the weather. Instinctively they moved out of the area. We lost very few animals to the flood. But there were thousands upon thousands of people who lost everything. Now they have to start living again. How do they do that? easiest way is to start poaching to get meat they need to feed their families the whole hunting community stepped in and they helped thousands of tons of food and equipment was trucked in flown in and delivered to those people that's why they see us as their allies the ecotourism NGOs who beg for money all over the world. The local villager on the ground, they don't know who that is. They hear about something, they don't understand it, and they don't see it. Where the money goes to, I don't know. But that local villager, who's just had his whole life washed away, he knows who the hunters are. He knows who looks after him. And those areas that do not get visited by the ecotourism people are the areas that we operate in. All the major game parks started off as hunting areas. The famous Kruger National Park in South Africa. It was established and proclamated as the Sabi Game Park of hunting. The Addo Elephant Park in the Eastern Cape with its famous Addo Elephants. How did that came about? A hunter by the name of PJ Pretorius started that. He was the instigator for it. Most of the other parks, the same thing happened. So people I want to ask you to look upon the value of your hunting.
other than an entry into a record book. If how big your animal is, how long the horns are, and where it is placed in the record book is what you are after, I can't really fault you or blame you for that, each person to his own, but there's a much bigger picture to the hunting than just the size of the animal. People think about this, it's in our hands to see the future of this. Will our children see it? Will their children see it? Will they experience it? The only way it can happen is if us hunters start working and spending our money to where it is most needed. And Africa is in need. It is in a big need. So guys, let's get together, let's sit around a campfire, let's listen to the African wildlife night sounds. If you're lucky enough to be in an area where there's lions, hyena, enjoy it. Take your children with, take your family with, there's lots for them to do. They don't need to hunt if, they don't in, if they're not into it. But let them experience the true Africa. People, as I always say, hunt responsibly and hunt ethically. Thank you.